canoe about this wide. <laughs> you had to sit very still. And, and uh, a fisherman in another boat fell out and, and he was entangled in the nets and he went down very quickly. And I called to some of the fishermen, save his life, save his life. I, and they said, Beben, Beben, it is not convenient. I said, I will pay you how much. And we argued over the, uh, how much I would pay them. And finally they got him out in, in no time at all. But by then it was too late. He, he was drowned. But I thought, how often for us it is not convenient. I, um, I, I met my wife. Maria was a um, daughter of missionaries. Her parents had passed away, and she was teaching in a school there. Um, Maria and her, her sisters. And um, she was under the protection of Miss Aldersley. Miss Aldersley, I, I can only describe you in the kindest and most Christian term. Miss Aldersley, was a she, she was a she-dragon. I, I believe in her pram, people looked at her and said, how do you do, Miss Aldersley? I'm not certain she had a Christian name. I certainly wouldn't be brave enough to pronounce it if she had. Unless a man was blind and deaf and completely stupid, she would always be Miss Aldersley. I, I cannot imagine a man formidable enough to ask her for her hand in marriage. But she said to me, who are you? And I said, I, I, I'm no one. She said, then you're not good enough to court Maria. And, and perhaps I was not, but I was persistent. And I, I wrote a letter to Maria's legal guardians, which fortunately were not Miss Aldersley, and, um, uh, because love knows no bounds, I, I, I sent my letter overland, which was much faster, and Miss Aldersley learned of my intentions, and she sent her letter, and because she was also a cheap old bitty, uh, she sent her letter by sea, which was cheaper, but took longer, and, and so my letter arrived uh, two weeks prior to hers, and, and so Maria's guardians sought after my parents, they asked after my character, and, and wondered what this interfering old woman was doing writing them, and so much to Miss Aldersley's dismay, uh, Maria and I were married. Not long after we were married, uh, there came a trial, uh, not, not, not in our marriage, not in our lives, but in our, in our faith. Um, a friend of mine, Dr. Parker, had also adopted Chinese clothing, and uh, he had continued to, to work as a professional, uh, as a doctor. He had two clinics. One of them was for people addicted to opium, of which there were many in China, and he would charge them for a cure. And then with this money, he would run a free clinic. His wife had taken ill, and he thought perhaps a holiday would be in order for her. And he asked Maria and I if we would take his clinic and for a month. Uh, we felt that would be sufficient. And so he left monies, and everything was in order. And we took this free clinic. And we received a letter from him saying that his wife was dying and that he was going to return to Scotland, her home, and that it would not be a month. It would be a year or perhaps two years before he could return. I didn't know what to do. I, we had barely enough money to feed ourselves and certainly not enough money to run this clinic and all of the medical work that I do is free. I, I do not charge for any of it. We wrote in Chinese of the daughter of the clinic, Yahweh Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And when people would come and ask me, I would say, oh, certainly God will provide. It's so easy to speak those words, so difficult for us sometimes to believe them. All I could see was that every day the medicines grew less and less. Every day the shelves grew lower and lower. Every day the great basket of rice that we were feeding all of these patients kept going down and down and down. Finally, the cook came to me. He said, Dr. Taylor, this is the last bowl of rice. And I said, surely the Lord's provision is near. But I did not believe that it was. But that day a letter came was from an old friend of mine. He had come into an inheritance and he had sent what was to us a princely sum of money with the promise of a like amount to come every month from now on. And you said, well, of course, of course, that's how these stories go. You pray, God sends the money. Now the letter was from England. The letter had been posted five months before we had even begun to pray. 
before we had even taken the clinic, before we even knew there was going to be a need, God had already met it. This is the part of our God. This is His promise that before we call, He has answered, that even when we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit cries out for us with groanings that cannot be uttered, cannot be understood. This is what He means. I have two more stories, and then I will be silent. I do not wish to keep you, but they are things that are dear to my heart. The, the time came for us to return to England. We had founded the China Inland Mission. It was uh, time to have some of our translation work printed into the different dialects in Chinese, and we believed time to invite others to come and join us. So we set sail. About a week out from England, there was a storm, and um, in the storm, I was hurled against one of the bulkheads of the ship. Uh, I struck my, my spine, and my spinal cord began to swell inside my spinal column. By the time we reached my sister Amelia's home that was going to be our, our headquarters during those days, I was paralyzed from the waist down. And I ask God the very same question which you have asked God at one time or another. It is our very favorite question to ask him. Why? Why this? Why here? Why now? I, I do not need this difficulty. God, I have letters to write. I have people that I must see. I must, I must travel the length and breadth of England. God, why do you put me in such a situation now? And we do not like it very much when God says to us, be still and know that I am God. And I confess, sometimes I wish he had added the corollary, and you are not. It would have made it more clear to us. I was as helpless as a baby. I could not walk. I couldn't do anything. But God brought dozens upon dozens of helpers and volunteers. Dr. Taylor, may I write letters for your dictation? Dr. Taylor, I will travel for you. Dr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor, and... When the time came for us to return to China, God had provided a sailing vessel for our use, and he had filled it with missionaries for every province in China. You see, this is why the Lord Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. It was then that I learned my spiritual secret, if you will, that I share freely with you. It was then that I learned what it means to cast all of your cares upon him. It was then that I learned what it meant to trust completely in him. Not only to trust him as my savior, but I learned what it means when the scripture says that Christ is all and in all. We return to China. God began to do a great work. We were reaching the entire country. All of our missionaries adopted Chinese clothing. This is my final story. God had provided for us a, a hotel. 